I think it's important for people to help with the fundraising for OTA and help fund their organization because for me personally, it was a period of growth and exploration and a lot of fun. And OTA has brought so much joy and adventure and education into my life. And I know that it has done that for many other young people on the last Sunday of every month for small day trips. Um, and the funding goes towards big, longer trips during the summertime. And I know that it was really empowering and impactful for me. And I know it'll be for many other young people as well. What we're doing for our fundraiser this evening, we're really excited about. We have three major umbrella categories that we're hoping to fund. So one of those is our administrative costs, just the, the odds and ends, the printing costs, the um, saving up a little bit money, a little bit of money for an office someday those sort of things. Another big part is our scholarship fund. So that is, um, that's going to help the kids that we serve come on our trips regardless of financial need. So we as an organization offer, um, offer admittance to any youth regardless of their ability to pay. So sometimes we need to send kids on a full scholarship and that's really important that we don't turn away anyone because of funds. And we're hosting a fundraiser today um, because we need help getting money for our scholarships. The community that we serve is greatly under-resourced um, and we are a very small organization. Um, so we need money to both serve those kids directly to be applied towards our, our trip programs um, and then also to help us be able to do the things that we need to do to reach those kids. So that's everything from printing out brochures to going out and doing outreach to being a table at a conference um, or different things like that. So. The dollars that we're able to raise are really, really critical in helping us continue to be able to offer this resource to kids this year, next year, and beyond. You can still make a donation, which we will love, and the kids will love, for all of these wonderful programs that OTA puts on every year. So nice to see everybody. It's been wonderful chatting this evening. Um, if you don't remember my name, I am Donatella Howe. I'm actually the uh, 45th elected Empress of Seattle with the Imperial Sovereign Court of Seattle. Wow. Thank you. And this is my Duchess of Puget Sound, Siren Hung. Of my... Hi. So we're, we are here as your drag royalty this evening to help fundraise. Um, so thank you so much. I believe the gentlemen are tallying the silent auction. And uh, we are going to begin with a short video production or presentation from one of our members of OTA. Hi, I'm Drew. I like being out in nature and doing things like hiking, camping, and kayaking. So it's even more fun doing those things with people who support me. Being queer is a part of my identity, and being able to explore and express that in a supporting environment makes me happy. Thanks, OTA. Well, so next we're going to invite another OTA member to speak for you all today, and he's now one of my new best friends, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Xander. Hello, I'm Xander. Um, I'm one of... A year ago, two super rad and queer women sat across from me in a circle at a local LGBT support group to teach us about an organization called Out There Adventures. They asked us questions like, what are your favorite outdoor adventures? And deeper things like, how can we deconstruct gender norms? That's <laughs> deeper questions than that. That was the only thing that came to mind. <laughs> That day at group was such a blast that I promised myself I wouldn't miss an opportunity to be a part of OTA. Last summer, we went on a kayaking trip through the San Juans for eight days, and I'd have to say it made my top five best weeks of my life by day two. I learned how to cook, ration, pitch a tent, and use a map. Not only did I learn material skills, but lifelong lessons such as leading without using my voice, asking for help when I need it, and being okay with the fact that I, always, I won't always know everything about everything. 
OTA has shown me a space where I can be as queer as I want, a place where I will never be judged by my gender, and a place where I can laugh, cry, and learn, and that place is nature. Thank you. Thank you, Xander. Some really wonderful. Come on out here, Ellie. Come on. Or sorry, Siren. I'm still getting used. Si Siren is new to the court system, and she's one of my newest imperial daughters uh, during my reign as empress. And I sometimes have to remind myself that I have to use her drag name sometimes when she has a wig on, and not use her her Muggle name. So, <laughs> just like when I'm a Muggle, sometimes everyone calls me by my drag name. Whoops. That's, that's but that's because most people don't know my real <clears throat> name. Whoop. Um, but it has been an honor to be here this evening, and especially talking with Xander, he is a fantastic individual, and the more I'm involved in the community in Seattle and around the Sound, meeting these young queer youth who are coming up, it's just, it's fantastic. I myself came out at 20, and the world was a lot different <laughs> that far 13 years ago. Um, in a different situation coming out, and now seeing so many folks um, from all aspects of life coming out together and being who they are and being happy, and also in this setting um, with outdoor activities and being able to leave the city and enjoy nature, that's, it's fantastic. So I'm honored to be here this evening with you all, and um, thank you very much to Keith, especially for inviting me. Um, he and I go way back, but this is an awesome opportunity, and I love this organization and can't wait to do more with you all. And thank you all for being here and auctioning and donating. So yeah, thank you. This is fantastic. Um, I want to bring up Elise, for the executive director, who also had some notes and would like to speak. Great. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, as is standard for me, I didn't prepare anything ahead of time. Um, I had sort of a vision on what I was going to talk about, and that has since shifted a little bit. So um, first, I just, again, want to thank everyone for coming out today. I want to thank our wonderful hostesses. Um, I want to thank Xander for coming all the way. I know a lot of folks came over from Seattle, but it's a particular trek um, for some of us. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm really excited that we're here year two. Some of you were here last year for our first ever fundraiser when this whole crazy thing was just an idea. Um, and we have since taken that idea and turned it into a lot more than just an idea. Um, so last year, Xander was a part of our first ever um, trip for OTA. So we did eight days of sea kayaking up in the San Juans. And since then, we've launched day programs. We've got a partnership with the Mountaineers. We have six summer trips on the books right now um, that are serving youth 14 through 22. And we're doing all sorts of crazy things like rock climbing, surfing and hiking, sea kayaking, backpacking. And there's a couple more activities that we have that we have planned. So it's been very exciting to see this organization grow. Um, it has not been without its trials and tribulations. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if any of y'all have ever tried to start a nonprofit, but it is a terrifying endeavor. And uh, many, many days I wonder what we're doing. And then we have events like this, and we hear people talk about how this organization has touched their lives in just the year and a half that we've been an official nonprofit. And that reminds me why we're here doing these things. When I was talking to Anne back there running the sound for us a few minutes ago, she was sort of marveling at the community that's been created here. So we've got a smaller group than we did last year, but it's a bunch of people that maybe would have not otherwise interacted with each other. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what it's all, all it's about. And, um, and then we're also about trying to raise money for people like Xander so we can take them outside and expose them to these really cool things that have made a significant impact in my life for sure. And I'm sure all of you are here because you've had a similar experience in nature or with people um, that are from your community that's been really powerful for you. And we're just trying to do that same thing for a, a different group of folks. Um, so again, thank you all for coming and making the trek over here on your Saturday night. I think now we're going to do an impromptu Q&A. Is that what we decided? I can't remember now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I think we're going to bring Xander back up here. 
I know, you like your table back there. Did everyone get to talk to Xander today? I know some of you were over there for a while, so he's got a lot of cool information about stuff that will be there. No, you can keep coming. Yeah, keep going. Um, but before we pack everything up, you might want to speak to him. He's, he does a lot of cool work around Seattle um, as an activist for, for the community that he represents, and he's very articulate and knowledgeable on lots of things. Um, some of those things are OTA things. So what we're going to do is if anyone has any questions about what we have going on, maybe where we came from, trips that we have planned for this summer, anything that you want to ask us about OTA, we would be happy to answer those questions right now. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I can even project my voice. <laughs> I just want to hear more about the trips you've got planned. Sure. Yes. So <laughs> Betsy wasn't you weren't quite ready for the headset. <laughs> um, so we have divided our summer program offerings into two different styles, you can say. Our outdoor school is for youth who are 18 to 22. And so our, the, our goal with those programs is to really help youth who are interested in taking on a greater leadership opportunity and maybe ultimately working as wilderness leaders themselves. So it's a sort of hybrid traditional OTA trip with also a um, kind of even more of a job skills training program, you could call it. Um, our goal would be to get just to infiltrate the entire outdoor leader organizations with queer youth um, and to turn the whole outdoor, uh, the whole outdoor world queer. Um, so that would be the goal of the 18 to 22 year old programs. And then our youth programs for 14 to 18 year olds um, are more are more based on your leader of the day opportunities and other um, community building activities. So for example, with the leader of the day, you're gonna take, um, you're gonna learn your skills throughout the course of the trip and then you're going to, with a partner, lead the entire group through a day on the water. So from beginning to end, figure out when we're gonna wake up, what we're gonna do, where we're gonna go, all that good stuff. Um, and we have, let's see, we have a three day, surfing and hiking trip on the Washington coast. We have a four day trip rock climbing in Mazama in the Matau Valley. We have our eight day sea kayaking trip. We have a couple other backpacking trips. So we're gonna be busy this summer. We're hoping to fill up our summer offerings. Um, and those are, those are the options that we're offering this summer. We're also, so this is super exciting for us this year, um, Knowles, the National Outdoor Leadership School, which I know some of y'all know very big, important organization in the outdoor ed world, um, came to us and asked if we wanted to be a gateway partner. So they have a program that allows um, youth who maybe wouldn't otherwise be able to access their 30-day courses, which are pretty darn expensive, if y'all have ever looked on their website. Um, so we can send a, we would offer up a young person or two every year to be an applicant for a Knowles 30-day course anywhere in the country. And if they're accepted, they get to go on that course for free. So their tuition is waived. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for young folks to access services beyond us and continue on down that line. Yeah. So we do a lot of in-person outreach right now. That is the bulk of the way that we connect with folks. Um, so that's how we got connected with Xander. We went to a group um, over east of Seattle. And uh, so we do meetings at GSAs and different support groups around the region, try to connect with folks through social media. Um, and then the way that, that we try to make our programs accessible to folks that are, that are underrepresented and under-resourced is by um, offering a lot of scholarships <clears throat> so scholarships are available for all of our programs and we do try to meet any financial needs um, that kids have and there are a lot of financial needs um, that folks have when they want to access our services and that's why we have fundraisers like this event um, so the bulk of this money goes to help us get kids outside during our summer programs um, and then we you know we're a young organization so we're obviously just trying to continue to to build um, relationships with different community partners like Latino Outdoors, Outdoor Afros, um, folks that represent different communities than us but are sort of similar in that they're not the standard folks you might see outside. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> 
I guess it was kind of like a sense of the word kind of thing in my speech because I just wanted to really emphasize that it was awesome first day in kind of thing or second day in. Um, I remember the first day we were we were paddling from Sp Spencer's Spit and then uh, we cut over to this island and there was like a really bad current going on and Elise was like, oh no, we gotta like cut over this way and we were like, what? This isn't the path that we're supposed to be going on and like we had to do this big loop around and we were exhausted. It's already the first day, we're only like a couple hours in and it was probably the most exhausting paddle out of all the eight days, for me at least. There's another one but I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> 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 and when we landed on the island, it was like, it wasn't too cold, it wasn't too warm, and I don't even remember what the name of the island was, what was it? James Island, James. And um, we like pitched our tents, I had never pitched a tent on my own, and we cooked dinner, I had no idea how to cook, so they did it, it was awesome. <laughs> um, and then right before I went to bed, I went, and sat like, there was like this little wooden fence and I like climbed through it and the sun was setting and I have this picture of like my little mandals on with like bright orange socks and it matched the color of the sunset and I was like, I couldn't be happier than in this moment and the whole, it just set like the mood for the rest of the trip and I was really emotional the whole time and really happy and like overwhelmed and overstimulated constantly and every time I would just check in with myself and be like, remember that sunset, and every day felt like that sunset. You make me cry. <laughs> True. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, Bill. <clears throat> Yeah, so we're, we're open to, we say queer youth and allies, you know, so if there's an ally that's within our age range. Um, we haven't had, to the best of my knowledge, any folks that identify as an ally, but we wouldn't necessarily turn them away. Um, yeah. I was a massive ally as a 16 year old for sure. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, So yeah, we're definitely open to that. Um, and that is in our, you know, when we go out and do outreach and stuff, we do use that language. We, we don't want the program to turn into something that is primarily populated by folks that are not LGBTQ. But um, we're not gonna, you know, if someone has, if their best friend is gay and they wanna go out and have that experience with that person, we're, we're, we're down to facilitate that. Yeah. Yeah, so we do, um, we started our day program stuff uh, in November, that day hike, is it November? Um, November, December, and, uh, and then we've been doing them pretty much every month ever since, and that is the plan for this next year. Um, we're talking to a few organizations, trying to get some snowshoes, maybe go snowshoeing. I would love to do some cross-country skiing, because I think that'd be hilarious. Um, <laughs> Have you ever cross country skied? No. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, we do we do stuff uh, throughout the year, and then we've got some really great partnerships with um, some climbing gyms. So one of the silent auction items is from Island Rock Gym, which is on this island. Um, fantastic folks, and and then there's a few gyms, climbing gyms on the Seattle side that are super supportive of us. So we'll have activities indoors to get outside of the rain as well. Cool. Any other questions? I thought you were going to ask one, Dad. No? You're good? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Um, do you have one off the top of your head, or should I talk while you think? <laughs> Why don't well, I'm really good at that. I'm really good at talking. No. 
I can keep going. I get it from my dad, actually. He's in the back over there. Um, <laughs> so I think, uh, I guess that is really tough. You know, we had a, um, everything that happened on Xander's trip will obviously go be stored in my memory books because it was the first trip that we had done. Um, on the slideshow, I don't know if anyone noticed, but there's a photo that Kira took of me with like a triumphant, like Rocky, like, yeah, we did it um, photo from that on that trip because it very much felt like, you know, we had had won the match or something because um, we had worked really hard and, and had this thing come to fruition and that was fantastic. Um, so it, everything from that trip was very memorable. This last weekend, we were over at the Mountaineers Program Center in Seattle and um, teaching some kids how to climb, rappel, and belay and uh, at their outdoor wall. Um, and I was talking to a parent of a young kiddo that's been coming pretty consistently to those events that we've had over there. And um, this young person's 14, and mom was saying that she's not really into too many activities. Nothing is really keeping her interest except for our programs. And she's come to every single one um, that has been available to her. And mom said that was the only thing that she's really been excited about right now. So it's hearing things like that, you know, that make us feel really good about the stuff that we're doing. You know, the, everything that people are telling us, those are our goals. And it's nice to know that we're, we're able to meet those. Um, I think for me, there were a number of just smaller moments, whether it was like, Drew and Xander just like chatting in their boat, talking about things. And I loved how I could notice, I felt like you and Drew were able to kind of have this reciprocal teaching relationship. Xander's a couple years older than Drew, so he's got some more life experience with college and teachers and things like that. And then Drew is also just has this very developed sense of self. And I think that you all were able to talk a lot. Not, of course, that you have is that lacking in you, but Drew just has this very, just kind of innate way of being who they are. Um, I think we could all learn from Drew in that way, and it was just really beautiful for me to watch them be able to teach each other, um, which any two people can do, but it was just really beautiful to see these two do that. Um, and for like more of a standout moment, there were these two seals that were following us, and we, um, the kids assigned them names and identities, and they were Frederick and Holga, um, and <laughs> Holga um, is a uh, non-monogamous trans woman, right? And Frederick is a genderqueer person who is more into monogamy. And so they were really struggling to find a way to make their love survive because <laughs> the non-monogamy and the monogamy weren't meshing anyway. And and we just, we all developed this saga. And Drew and Xander were definitely, were definitely pushing it forward. And it was just beautiful for me, not only because it was fun and entertaining, but they were able to see themselves and see their own community represented in the outdoors. And that was the biggest part for me. It's that, yes, like the wilderness can be so flexible and can be whatever you need it to be. And so for our participants on the trip, they were able to create that representation that they don't see in the media and maybe in their families and in the everyday world. And so that was the really beautiful moment for me that they were able to harness the power of the outdoors to affirm themselves. That was my favorite moment. Cool. Okay. Well, unless there are any more questions, I think I'm gonna hand it back over. You can. It's fine. Uh -huh. Okay, we're gonna do that. I feel like it's your. It's. I feel like we're doing like a little zookeeper show where it's like I should just hold my hand out and like a falcon's gonna come down, or you're gonna like do this and a seal's gonna come out. Then talking about winter sports, just I flash back to being 18 at UW in Air Force ROTC. Right, she's a drag queen and she was in the Air Force. No. Or trying to be. And the first and last time I ever did a winter anything, because I'm from the south. <laughs> and the first time, well, two stories. Uh, so 18, Air Force ROTC, UW, went up to Whistler. That's where I learned to snowboard. That was wonderfully terrifying. Basically, my friends were like, and you're at the top of the hill. You have to snowboard down to finish. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I fell a lot. Don't be scared. It's okay. It was fun. 
Um, but then, of course, being from the South, the first time I was unleashed on snow was uh, Lake Tahoe. I was eight, and I wore sweatpants, a sweatshirt, and slip-on shoes, and I lost the slip-on shoes in the snow. <laughs> my dad and sister laughed and laughed. Well, there you go. Um, so we have winners from the uh, silent auction. They've been tallied. Uh, just to remind you that there are the uh, donation slips on all of your chairs. So, you know, whether or not you're a winner, feel free to donate. Please donate because, of course, what you're donating is going to help scholarship uh, the youth to these programs and getting them out there. Um, I've actually come up with a couple ideas myself that I was talking uh, with the ladies about for um, future ideas for day trips and things. So, I don't know. I'm actually sitting on the sidelines here going, hmm. Northwest Track was a cool idea. I used to work there for seven years. Maybe I'll volunteer to like guide that because I am sitting over here going, wait a minute, I can access all of the information on the animals that I used to know <laughs> and work with, and I still can probably do some of my tricks, my keeper tricks, to make them work. So I'll break some rules and like the kids will get to see some fun animals. But I think we're going to like just read these off kind of like Oscar nominations, sort of, and we're going to go from the lowest to the highest. So if you, uh, if you get called... You've won. There's no Oscar ceremony. You're just one. Um, do you want to start? That's the item, and that's the winner. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. And the winner for the coffee package from Rolling Bay Cafe, Barbara Simonson. Oh, bless you. It's Simonson, right? Simonson. Simonson. Simon, Simonson. We should get Oscars. There's no speeches. Please don't stand oh. up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Coffee package from Beans in the Boiler Room goes to Isabel Love. <laughs> it's okay, just clap, be excited. Uh, performance, bag. Ooh, performance bag tune-up from Bainbridge Classic Cycle, Bill and Lynn. Agnew, sorry. Ah, see? Also, 10 visits to Bainbridge Rock Gym, Bill and Lynn Agnew. Hey. That's a lot of Cheating. words. <laughs> and the winner of the kayak paddle is Paul and Betsy Carroll. And the winner of the women's mithril jacket by Outdoor Research, Claire Isaacson. Yay. You'll be warm and dry, because winter is over. This I was going to say not over, and then I realized, well, it's almost June. This is Northwest. It, That's true. It rains in it's gonna be. It's probably raining now. Who knows? Let's It'll see. It's not tomorrow. Is there a deer yet? I want to see a deer before I leave Bainbridge Island. Speaking of the jacket, though. Because we don't have those in Seattle. Um, the men's mithril jacket by Outdoor Research goes to Paul and Betsy Carroll. <laughs> Two. Red Pants on Montana gift certificate goes to Megan Hogue. Sorry. Oh, that look. Painting of, one room. Painting of One Room by Island Fix goes to Barbara Simonson. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Did anybody actually sit on the bench? Okay. That's I totally a... missed everyone taking a sit because that was going to be my art thing of like, you sat on it, you buy it. You sat, you we, sit, you we bid. We were going to get all of the money out of that of you. So. And the winner of the Live Edge bench is Claire Isaacson. <laughs> so that's the... hmm. And the winner of the San Juan weekend sale on the 72 foot yacht, or is it it's not a not yacht? It's not you, I'm sorry. It's not me. It's not a yacht. I think that's a catch, right? Catch. 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 Yes. Catch. It's not me, which is fine because they take six people, so you can run five days. <laughs> I'm fun. Um, <laughs> goes to Katie Rah Rahani. <laughs> Woo! So those are all the items. So again, remember that those donation slips are on your chair. If you didn't happen to win something, or if you still want to donate more, feel free to. I'm going to fill one out. Just 
because I feel like this is something we need to do. And I, we were also talking off the side, and I think the Court of Seattle is going to figure out some sort of fundraiser we're going to do this, e this year for OTA. Um, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to cook something up. We're going to have fun, and we're going to fundraise for you this year over in Seattle. And if you come over to Seattle, please let us know so that we can get more people involved and more of our court people, because I think they would enjoy this. Um, and I'd just like to point out that the total raise was $2,100. Yes. I'm going to give it to Keith for checkout, and uh, thank you again for having us. So we're not... Thank you. So we're not quite done yet, and uh, don't leave. Uh, we have a couple more Aww. things. But uh, I wanted to point out, if you want, a bidding, uh, want an auction item, uh, please go at the end of the night to the same desk you checked in at, and they will help you check out with whatever else you might need there. So... I'm going to hand this back over to Kira. All righty. Well, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of all of us here at OTA. Um, we are a new organization, it's been said. Um, we're all working our butts off to get this off the ground, and every one of you being here has really made a difference. Um, we're a really new organization. We're a really unique organization. There's literally nobody else um, in the world, to the best of our knowledge, doing exactly what we do. So it's really exciting. You all have a little bit of that I was there when moment. So, so when we make it big, when we go national, you'll know. You know you were there. Um, anyway, so thank you so much. OTA is here so that we can harness the unique power of the outdoors for queer youth who need a safe space. Um, and that's what we're here for, and that's why you all are here, and thank you for your support.